So you're not going to be aware that that user or whoever has access to your mailbox because of the fact that the way that they added it by read permissions like it did, it's just not easily seeable. Hmm, that's sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bobby, so I know that you've had a lot of discussions with your clients in the past about this topic. So, so share with us your wisdom and your thoughts about this. Yeah, we get asked several times a year about this, uh, some from just normal users, others, it's the owner of the organization and they have an admin and they're just not sure what their admin has access to their information. So it's really covers a, a gambit of, of different questions. And so what I thought we would do is just cover some things that I think would address most of those questions. This isn't going to be an exhaustive examination of all possibilities, uh, but I think this will cover and get everything across that, that people are really asking. Does that make sense? Awesome. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, so let's get into the first thing. So this first one might seem straightforward, almost per perhaps silly, but mm -hmm. it's definitely worth discussing. And uh, it, it deals with if someone has access to your password, right? If they can, if they can log in with your email address and password, they have access to your email. And what that means is, if you put your password underneath your keyboard, if you yell across the room to someone and they know your password, um, they can log in as you. The best way to combat that uh, is is two FA. Uh, and you just set up two-factor authentication. If you're not familiar with what that is, that's basically you put in your username, your password, and then 365 will then either text you additional code to your cell phone directly, or it will notify the app on your phone and say, hey, someone's trying to log into your account. Mm -hmm. Once you set that up, even if it's an admin uh, and they know your password, they would have to authenticate through that secondary authentication method uh, to, to get in. So that's where it's kind of helpful that if you work at an organization and they require you to provide the password, because we have some clients that, that do that, but we still recommend them to turn on two-factor authentication. So if someone's going to be logging in as their account, um, they'll, that user will know about it because of the two-factor two factor authentication aspect. Um, does that make sense, Kaylee? Yeah, definitely. I know it has saved me a bunch of times when it even tells you um, more information about who is logging in, even like their um, location, you know, where they're mm -hmm. trying to access it from. So it's very helpful and definitely something that you should always have. Yeah. And this doesn't have to deal specifically with your admin trying to access or someone right. in the organization, but it could be someone outside your organization. So just in general, it's a good practice to have 2FA configured. For sure. So the second thing I'd like to talk about is a little bit more of house cleaning. And what I mean by that, Kaylee, is that organizations, it's very important for them to have a definition of what is allowed and what isn't allowed on their computers, and then what information is allowed to be accessed inside your organization by your admin team. What I mean by that is if your organization doesn't have a policy that says admins are allowed to do these kinds of things, then there's no real recourse to kind of say what they can and can't do. So it's really important for, I think, any organization to have those things clearly defined. Um, and then on top of that, it also speaks to why it's great to have another organization like a managed service provider like ourselves work with, you if, with for example, if you have an in-house IT person, you know, that's where the owners and the operators in the organization, if they have those policies defined and they notify those managed service providers, this is the criteria that needs to make sure is being met. As they're in there and working with that client, if they see any deviations from those, they can mention that to management as well as leadership about those kinds of things. So that just kind of creates some good guide rails. And it just kind of speaks to another area of why having an outsourced uh, service provider in these kinds of areas is very helpful. And then lastly, on this house cleaning item, I think it's really important to discuss about that fear that everyone can see everything. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Some of the things that we're going to show, it's not going to be very easy for you to know if these things are happening. And it's not meant to be shared to scare you. It's just letting you know what that reality is. And that goes back to my previous statement about having kind of good guide rails, that it's really important once you start to understand what can kind of happen, why those guide rails are so important. So let's get into some specific areas of where information can be monitored and looked at, and uh, we can go over those. Okay, so in here, I'm logged in as our demo account. And 
this first one that I want to talk about is it covers why it's important for you to lock your screen. And what I mean by that is if you hit the Windows key, which looks like a little Windows if you have a Windows-based uh, keyboard, and you hit L at the same time, what it will do is automatically lock your screen so that you have to put in a username and password to log in. Well, why is that important? So the reason why that's important is if you leave your desktop unattended, someone could basically right-click on your inbox, go to permissions here, and they could add themselves as a mailbox permission user to be able to see that content that you have. Um, that's a little nefarious. Uh, I'm not suggesting there are people running around your organization doing that, but it's definitely worth discussing why it's important to lock your screen when you get from get up from your desk. It's just it's just a good practice. I do that, and I work in a home office. I lock my screen, and the reason why I do that is it's not great when the cat walks across the keyboard while I'm in the middle of writing document. And That's exactly right. Chunks of paragraphs, right? So there's just lots of reasons why it's a great idea to lock your screen. Um, this is another reason why is if someone were to add their permissions to your shared without your knowing, probably unless you look out on a periodic basis, you're not going to know that they can literally look at your inbox. Right. Um, and that's kind of how that works. So let me kind of show you an example of what that would look like. So here's my webmail. And just to kind of show you how easy it is. Once I've been given permission to this mailbox folder, all I have to do is come under here and hit open another mailbox. And when I click on that, it's going to come up with what mailbox you want to open. You can type in the address of the user that you're trying to access. And at that point, that's going to bring you pretty much right back to here. So you'll be able to see this information and, and look at the content of the mail in the folder. Um, so the best way for you to be able to see if that's going on is just right click on your inbox and you go to permission. And this pretty much looks identical if you're using the full-fledged Outlook version. That's exactly case. what I was going to ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you basically just right click on it and you go properties. And, and this is pretty much the exact dialog box that you'll get back. Mm -hmm. So this second one is pretty straightforward, no pun intended, but it's basically setting up a forward where all messages that are coming to that inbox are forwarded. Now this can be seen by the user and we'll kind of show that right now. Awesome. So as you can see here, this is, this is all happening um, as an admin user. So I'm logged into our, our admin uh, 365 container. So as an admin user, I can go under that respective user. In this case, it's our demo, our Axiom demo account. Uh, then under here, I can go to mail. Under manage email forwards, I can click on this. And then as you see here, I went ahead and set it up under the demo account where it's forwarding mail to me. Mm -hmm. That's very easy to do, and then you can tell it to keep a copy still. So if this is configured this way, what would happen is the user would just get the mail like they normally do, but all messages that were coming inbound uh, are going to go to this specific user. In this case, it's going to me. Honestly, kind of confused about the difference between getting your emails forwarded to somebody else versus giving them permission to your mailbox. So can you kind of explain that difference here? Okay. Yeah, so, so what this is going to do is mail is going to flow in. In this case, I'm, I, what I'm doing is, is, is we're using this Axiom demo account right here, right? Mm -hmm. So as mail falls into this person's inbox, what it's going to do is it's going to take a copy of that and just forward it to another person's mailbox. And the difference between the one that I just showed versus this is all this is going to do is, sh is show the user's mail coming in. Um, it's not going to show me sent items. It's not going to show me the folder structure that that user has uh, when you're doing a mail forward. So the previous one literally gives you full access to that whole content of what's in their inbox and, and other things like that. Whereas the forward, all you're seeing is just one direction of the communication mail coming in. You don't see anything as far as a reply or anything along those lines. Um, also something that is that you notice that we see happen is the reason why we want to create these forward rules that notify the admin as well as the user that's done is if their mail gets compromised, this is a very common tactic that uh, threat actors will do is they will create a forward so they can listen to the communication that's happening and you can do it very innocuously. And then what will happen is they'll insert the communication at the right time uh, to try to intercept maybe wire transfers or you know just get company data uh, through those forwards. So. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not just internally where you have this challenge. It's, it's if there's a breach, these, these are things that you want to look at too. Right. And when you set this forward up under the admin section, which is where I'm showing you now, if the user checks under this gear right here, mm -hmm. um, then at that point, 
you can go under view outlook settings and then under this forwarding when i click on that notice it's saying hey your mail is being forwarded to this person so if you have any questions whether your mail is being forwarded you could go here under your webmail and see that mm. um, uh, this is the best place to find that out so uh, if you're using the full-fledged outlook just log in to your uh, outlook.office.com, put in your email address and password, go to the steps that I showed you, and it will tell you whether your mail is being forwarded or not. Oh, I see. Okay. And, and, and so any admin will have access though to, to do that, to do that. Okay. Yep. So, um, and there's a lot of good reasons to do this, right? Maybe the person's left the company and they're no longer there. They want to have mail forwarded for a period of time right. before you turn it into like perhaps a shared mailbox, or they do some other methodologies to get the mail flowing in a different direction. And this is just a quick fix. So this next one is called delegated permissions. So what happens is the admin is going to delegate permission to the specific 365 mailbox, allowing uh, whoever they want to assign this permission access to see everything in that inbox. Uh, so what that's uh, nice is at that point, you'll be able to see sent items, calendars, contacts, everything that is inside that mailbox. So let's take a look at that. So in here, we're back on our Axiom demo account. So when I click on this user, I can go back to this mail section here under this tab. And then while I'm under there, I can go under the manage or the mailbox permissions. And then in this situation, I've already added read and manage permissions under here for that specific person. And I've added myself. So what you're seeing here is, is actually me with that mailbox open. And you can kind of tell that because see this is account managed by Bobby Guerra. So this actual, I, all I did was just like I did before when I went in to open the mailbox, uh, because I've given full read permission, I now see everything. So when I, when I go through that process of under my mail folder, clicking on my picture and say open mailbox, I actually see everything. So I see sent items, drafts, contacts, calendars, it's all there based on the information that you share. And if I click on my inbox and I go to permissions, you notice in here, there's nothing, just default and anonymous. My name's not even under there. So if that's been set up, uh, you wouldn't know it. So you're not going to be aware that that user or whoever has access to your mailbox because of the fact that the way that they added it by read permissions like it did, it's just not easily seeable. Hmm, that's sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, there's, again, some very good use cases for that. Maybe the users left the organization. Maybe this might be a mailbox that multiple people need to have access to for specific reasons because they have custom mail flows or rules or things that are associated with this mailbox and you need users to see this. So 98% of the time, th these types of things are, are, are absolutely needed or are utilized in a very professional and needed methodology. But sometimes there are other reasons why uh, these things may be set up. So uh, I just wanted to be able to show what you would be able to notice. Right. Okay, so we're back to this Axiom demo account, starting to pick up on the theme there. And I click okay. on the Axiom demo and I go to the OneDrive section. And what I can do is I can create this link that's going to give me access to this OneDrive account. Mm -hmm. So if I click on this, and then once it makes this link in here, uh, I can then take this link and, and copy it and then paste it in here. Hmm. And then you're gonna see the Axiom demo account. So remember we created in some previous videos, this accounting link right, to SharePoint. Right. Um, so I can come in here if, if the permissions are lined up right, I can even get through to the SharePoint section based on that. Um, and then you know any documents that I might have in there that allows me to have access. So one of the things that you can do here though is when you are logged in as that user, if I come over here, so now I've switched over to a private browser. Hopefully, I'm not getting you too confused here. You can see it says AD over here. Mm -hmm. um, You're no longer Bombi Guerra's account. No, no longer Bombi. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm looking at this person. I can come under here, any of these, and I can say, okay, let me see what the permissions are on this. Right? What? Let me look at what what people have access to these things. And yeah. if you click under here, you can start to see that, wait a minute, you know, this person has access right. uh, to my, um, 
to my OneDrive. And you're like, well, why do they have access? Um, maybe they should, maybe they shouldn't. So that's one way where you can kind of find out and see if there's some permissions that, that are being shared. Um, so that's just something to keep, keep in mind. Again, I'm going that same vein. 99% of the time that we see these things are happening for a reason, right? The, the person's yeah. left the organization and you need access to that information um, and you haven't gotten around to moving the content. Maybe, maybe that person's been there for several years and there's quite a bit of information in there and they're not sure what they want to save and what they don't. So they're just going to try to find some time over the course of a month or so and find out what data they want to save and then just let the rest die. Yeah, well, I can, I can see for sure how this would be useful in the sense of getting to see somebody who has left the organization, see their uh, information in OneDrive or their email without having to move over all the stuff into Correct. something else. It's very, very useful to access that information quickly and efficiently. Um, yes. And I didn't even know that you could do that, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I definitely believe that we should educate, you know, our clients and all of you guys who are watching this video, you know, when you give somebody access or permission to something, what you're truly giving them before you mm -hmm. give it to them, you know, so you want to know everything that goes with, you know, giving somebody admin access in your organization, even that they would have all of this access to other people's emails in you know, your whole organization. And that's super important to know. It's also good to know all of the tips and tricks to, you know, as a user, understand who has access to those things. So both of those are all super important to just educate yourself and know who should and shouldn't have that access when it comes to that. Absolutely. And I think having an additional organization that isn't involved in the geopolitical aspect of the organization that can make sure that the policies of the organization are mandated correctly mm -hmm. and enforced correctly inside the organization. That's another pretty big value that an MSP can bring to uh, a company. Mm -hmm. And I think also it's really important to understand that you shouldn't just use these admin permissions as your, what I call walk around account. Like right. when you go to log in and just e use your email on your everyday use as you log into your machine, as you log into your computer, as you're, you know, you don't want your normal email account to have full global admin access inside your 365 container. And the reason why that's important is if you get compromised and your email, normal email account that you operate under is the one that gets compromised, they can do, whoever the threat actor is, can do all of those things and a lot more right. to your container. So that's why you're, like, even for, in our organization, like, our normal email accounts are not admin accounts. They are just normal accounts that are like everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, we have special accounts that we have permissions that have the rights to do those kinds of things, and that's just another area where you want to just build some some parameters and guidelines and securities uh, that aren't very difficult to do. But when you start thinking about how powerful these admins account are, just like you're talking about, Kaylee, they really do need to be thought of very seriously. Yeah. You need to take them very, very seriously. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you so much, Bobby, for sharing your knowledge about this access and permissions and being able to let us know uh, a little bit more on the background of an admin and what they can and can't do. Um, and we hope you guys who are watching this enjoyed this video. Comment down below um, if you have any questions or anything for us or for Bobby about admin access or user access. And also make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you want to be notified anytime we create and add content onto our channel. And also, if you would like to be a part of our Discord channel, I will link that down below so you can be notified when we are creating videos or doing any live streams and stuff like that. But we thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.